Greetings. My name is Mr. Wasman, and I'd like to welcome you to the Magical Bedtime Stories, sponsored by the Barberton Schools Curriculum Department. As I said, my name is Mr. Wasman, and I'm going to be teaching 8th grade math at Barberton Middle School this year. I love to read, and I'd like to share one of my favorite stories with you. The title of my book is The Dot and the Line, written by Norton Juster and illustrated by many different people in many different ways. You'll see, it's quite a surprise. I'd like to uh, tell you why it's my favorite book. Uh, it's one of the first ones I remember that's specifically about mathematics. And for the teachers out there, it has a uh, so many levels that you can uh, touch on and really it's good for little kids ages uh, 3 to 93. Uh, I'd like to tell you there's only three characters in this story. The dot, the line, and the squiggle. I'd like you to sit back and enjoy this little story. It's one of my favorites. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a sensible, straight line who was hopelessly in love with a dot. You're the beginning and the end, the hub and the core and the quintessence, he told her tenderly, but the frivolous dot wasn't a bit interested, for she only had eyes for a wild and unkempt squiggle who never seemed to have anything on his mind at all. They were everywhere together, singing and dancing and frolicking and laughing and laughing and Lord knows what else. He is so gay and free, so uninhibited and full of joy, she informed the line coolly. And you are as stiff as a stick, dull conventional, repressed, tied and trammeled, subdued, smothered, stifled, squashed, squelched, and quenched. Come around when you get straightened out, kid, the squiggle added with a rasping chuckle as he chased her into the high grass. Why take chances, replied the line. Without much conviction, I'm dependable. I know where I'm going. I've got dignity. But this was small consolation for the miserable line. Each day he grew more and more morose. He stopped eating or sleeping, and before long he was completely on edge. His worried friends noticed how terribly thin and drawn he had become and did their best to cheer him up. She's not good enough for you. She lacks depth. They all look alike anyway. Why don't you find a nice straight line and settle down? But he hardly heard a word they said. And any way he looked at her, she was perfect. Top 36, side 36, and front 36. He saw things in her that no one else could possibly imagine. She is more beautiful than any straight line I've ever seen, he sighed wistfully. And they all shook their heads. Even allowing for his feelings, they felt this was stretching a point. And so he spent his time dreaming of the inconstant dot and imagining himself as the forceful figure she was sure to admire. The line as a celebrated daredevil. The line as a leader in world affairs. The line 
as a fearless law enforcement agent. The line as a potent force in the world of art. The line as an international sportsman. But he soon grew tired of self-deception and decided that perhaps the squiggly line might have the answer after all. I lack spontaneity. I must learn to let go and to be free to express the inner passionate me. But it just didn't make any difference for no matter how often and how hard he tried, he always ended up the same way. And yet, he continued trying and failing and trying again until when he had all but given up, he discovered that at last, with great concentration and self-control, he was able to change direction and bend wherever he chose. So he did, and he made an angle. And then again and made another, and then 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 another. What stuff, he shouted, much impressed with his efforts. Then, in a wild burst of enthusiasm, he sat up for half the night, putting on an outrageous display of sides, bends, and angles. Freedom is not a license for chaos, he observed the next morning. Oh, what a head. There and then, he decided not to squander his talents in cheap exhibitionism. For months, he practiced in secret. Soon he was making squares and triangles, hexagram, parallelograms, rhomboids, polybehedrons, trapezoids, parallel pipettes, decagons, tetragrams, and an infinite number of other shapes so complex that he had to letter his sides and angles to keep his place. Before long, he learned to carefully control ellipses, circles, and complex curves, and to express himself in any shape he wished. You name it, I'll play it. But all his successes meant nothing to him alone. And so off he went to seek the dot once again. He doesn't stand a chance, muttered the squiggle in a voice that sounded like bad plumbing. But the line who was bursting with old love and new confidence was not to be denied. Throughout the evening, he was by turns mysterious. Clever. Dazzling. Profound. Complex. Erudite. Eloquent. Versatile. Enigmatic. Compelling. The dot was overwhelmed. She giggled like a schoolgirl and didn't know what to do with her hands. Then she turned slowly to the squiggle who had suddenly developed a severe cramp. Well, she inquired, trying to give him every chance. The squiggle, taken by surprise, <clears throat> did the best he could. Is that all, she demanded? I guess so, replied the miserable squiggle. That is, I suppose so. What I mean is, I never know how it's going to turn out. Hey, have you heard the one about the two guys who... The dot wondered why she had never noticed how hairy and coarse he was. 
and how untidy and graceless and how he mispronounced his L's and picked his ear. And suddenly she realized that what she th had thought was freedom and joy was nothing but anarchy and sloth. You are as meaningless as a melon, she said coldly. Undisciplined, unkempt, and unaccountable. Insignificant, indeterminate, and inadvertent. Out of shape, out of order, out of place, and out of luck. With that, she turned to the line and shyly took his arm. Do the one with all the funny curves again, honey, she cooed softly as they strolled away. And he did. And soon they did. And lived, if not happily ever after. At least reasonably so. The moral, to the vector, belong the spoils. Here's an interesting blurb about the author that if you were interested in more of his stories... It says, I know the print's tiny, uh, Norton Juster is a dedicated mathematician whose efforts have been focused primarily on the verification of supermarket register receipts and the calculation of restaurant gratuities in a number of foreign currencies. He has also done pioneering work on the psychological effects of mathematical melancholia. Mr. Juster is also the author of a number of books, including The Phantom Toll Booth, which has become a contemporary classic. His acclaimed The Dot and the Line was first published in 1963 and subsequently made into an Academy Award winning short film. The author lives with his wife in western Massachusetts, where he conducts a support group for negative numbers. And that's the end.